Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, I got a couple little topics here down below, so uh, feel free to comment on any or all as you see fit. So let, I'm going to put on my readers so we can enjoy the pens and actually see the writing. I will just say that I uh, should have bought these a long time ago because I... Definitely enjoying writing a lot more now that I can see it clearly. So, let's take a look at that writing. So, from left to right, we have the Pelican 400NN, the Navalure, which I'm told is pronounced Narwhal, Nautilus. We have the Parker Sonnet, no, oh, sorry, Parker Dual Fold. We have a Parker Sonnet, Schaefer Legacy, Lamy 2000. Another Parker Dual Fold, but this one's from the 1920s. And finally, a Viscante Homo Sapiens. We'll do our uh, writing in this Cognitive Surplus Theory Notebook. Alright, so my first pen is this Pelican 400NN from the 1950s. Uh, I've always enjoyed the Pelican finish, which I'm told is going to be changing. It's going to lose these transparent bits. Um, Pelican, Pelican beak. Open it up. Eh, it's got a little ink splashed on the nib, but quite a nice nib to write with. Um, I revisited this pen recently. This is a vintage pen that I ink up quite frequently. There's a couple that I really like, but I don't ink up very often just because they're so hard to clean. This one's relatively easy to clean. Uh, the ink in this one is Ackermann, Grunmark Smaragd. Which I guess has something to do with vegetable market. I don't speak Dutch. I took some German in high school, but, uh, or sorry, in college, but... Uh, you know, that only gets you so far with even German, let alone Dutch. So just a nice pen with a lot of flex and so on. Oh, that white balance is freak nasty. Let's see if I can adjust it. So I just kind of did an on-the-fly custom white balance. I guess I need to come back and do this more properly. I have not actually, now that I think about it, adjusted the white balance since I got the new lights. And I've had sunlight to help me all summer, so I guess it was time. Next pen is the Nautilus Navalure. Or sorry, Navalure Nautilus, which I am told can be pronounced Narwhal Nautilus. Has the fun ink windows. Uh, one complaint I've heard is that you can't, you know, that the ink windows aren't across from each other, but uh, I can't quite get it to the angle to show it here. But now that it is getting almost getting emptier, I can see across. Not as good as if the portholes were de de directly across from each other, but I can see. So I think it's good enough. And then the nib... Come on, autofocus, please. There we go. So the Navalure Nautilus. I got a double broad. I was just wondering if it was written on the nib, but it's not. The ink in it is Omos Gray, which you can no longer buy unless you find it on the used market. I've got sentimental for a while and thought, oh, I should keep my bottle and not use it. And then I thought, huh. or you could use it up. <laughs> so 
I mean, I'm not pouring it down the sink. I'm legitimately using it, but uh, yeah, time to get that bottle out of the way. Nice enough gray. And we have a Parker Dual Fold. Uh, the nib in it, I replaced the uh, medium that it came with, with a double broad. No, extra, extra broad is what Parker calls it. Uh, but I, I want to try it again with a different ink. But one thing, uh, do o fold, one thing worth noting, I mean, it is not quite as broad as this double broad not Nautilus, but it's not too far off either. And maybe if it's a different ink, I'd have more luck with it. So the ink in it is Pelican. I'm filming this way too late at night. 4001 Blue Black. Yeah, it's just a very nice... I mean, this is a nice color ink. I'm just told that it runs on the dry side. So, you know, put some very wet ink in this pen. I may have a totally different experience with it. Um, I postponed that because I wanted to keep writing with it. So I refilled it with the same ink and you know how that goes. It, you know, for as not double bro or not extra, extra broad as it looks, it sure went through its converter full of ink fast. And we have the lovely Parker Sonnet. Another pen that got a nib transplant. This one got a broad italic nib in it. Not a cursive italic, just a regular italic, but still. Yeah, and you can see what wonderful character it brings to the writing right there. Uh, you definitely don't want to get your nib tilted because then it quits writing. This ink, you know, isn't one of my best inks as far as colors. It's not bad. I just have others of this color that I like better. So this is Califolio Violet. It's uh, you know, kind of a muted violet. Uh, I, I've got a bottle of Deatramentis Violet and... I feel like I have another, oh, Pearl Violet, I think it's Dea Tremendous also. Dea Tremendous Pearl Violet that I have. Oh, oh, and I also have a bottle of Pelican Violet. So, you know, I'll be using up Violet Ink for a long time. Uh, Schaefer Legacy 2, which uh, Mrs. Hemingway Jones described as the Airstream trailer of the fountain pen world. I didn't show you the nib. Just, just has a fun inlaid nib. And it's a good writer. So Schaefer Legacy 2. Mine is a medium. And my ink is Lamy Turquoise. Which is quite a pleasant turquoise. I... Not sure. Oh, yeah, I've got one more bottle of a turquoise, but it's no longer made. So this is a likely candidate to be my final turquoise just because it's uh, low cost, comes in a very nice bottle, and it's easy to find. Of course, every day, the pen that rides to school in my shirt pocket is my Lamy 2000. I have four pens sitting at school that I've been correcting tests and such with. Um, no, they're, they're in different colors. But, you know, my Lamy 2000 is just my beloved Daily Writer pen. I misspelled Lamy, but I gotta fix it. There we go. 
This is a fine nib. Uh, the ink in it is Pelikan Edelstein Onyx. black ink that I'm trying to use up right now. I'm making good progress. Maybe not as good as I'd like, but I'm making progress. Um, other than being maybe a bit wetter, I guess I don't see obvious differences between this and the regular Pelican black, but eh, who knows? I, okay, this one's a bit wetter. Or did I say that? I don't know. I shouldn't do these late at night. Now, the lovely 1920s Parker Dual Fold Streamline Junior with a really, really attractive finish. And an engraving that I really struggle to read. As you can tell, this is a cursive, or sorry, has an oblique nib. Uh, the, ink, the ink in it is a uh, drawing a blank all of a sudden. <laughs> Platinum Classic. I guess I could look at my list. Lavender Black. It goes to a bit of a color change. I have Iron Gall inks that do more of a color change, but this one isn't bad. Yeah, see that test shows the oblique nature of the nib. And finally, the lovely Visconti Homo Sapiens. A little piece of history because when I bought this they were made with palladium nibs. Now they're made with gold nibs. I guess the palladium nibs were un uh, inconsistent. There we go. But uh, I got a good one. I think this pen is a lot of fun to write with. You know, I have another uh, Visconti with, with a gold nib, and it's just nowhere near as fun as this. Um, mine is a medium... I wanted a fine, but I got a medium. Mine is a medium nib because I got it used. And the ink in it is Noodlers. Black Swan. In English Rose. Which uh, means it may be taking till tomorrow for <laughs> this line to dry. I find Noodler's inks, eh, not all of them, but some of them tend to be very slow to dry, especially the longer they've been in the pen. You know, when you go to write on the page the next day and it's the ink is still wet, you're like, hmm, something's not right here. <laughs> Nathan Tardiff would say, well, use cheaper paper. So those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. We'll take these off so I can see you, because these only help with stuff that's close. I can't even really read my computer screen with them as far away as it is right now, and I can read it just fine. It has very small font, so there you go. But anyway, um, I, there were a few things that were just popped up to me this week, and nothing long, because I, I want to go to bed. But uh, one of the things that popped up this week, it was uh, Wednesday night, I think, and there was a report on one of my on a news website about people presenting thousand year old aliens that had been found in a cave somewhere, I think Peru, but they were pre presenting it to the Mexican Senate. I think it was Senate. 
Congress, anyway, their legislature. And I just thought, huh? <laughs> you know, there's the articles going on about their DNA is not human and all that kind of stuff. And I just got, huh? <laughs> so uh, I provided a link there. I, you know, I saw that and I thought, yeah, I, I don't think I'd have gone to press yet. Um, so I put up a link that I found this morning, because I'm filming this on Thursday. Uh, a gentleman, I forget the name of his channel, but anyway, he's a scientist. And he pretty much debunked it and showed how these things are made. And it's kind of a local form of art, apparently. And no, not alien corpses. So, yeah, keep waiting on those. I uh, another thing that came up and all of my links are missing. Yay. Um sorry. I had several links on this because I was thinking driving video with this topic, but uh there was some footage. I'm just gonna move a little closer to the light. Uh, there was some footage came out recently from our own Senate. Apparently our own Senate is holding a hearing on books and book bannings. And a Kennedy senator, I'm not sure what state he's from, was reading aloud from some book. And, of course, what he's trying to do is shock value. You, you, you pick the most explicit part of the book and take it totally out of context and shock everybody. You know, that'd be like, oh, here's the Bible. Hey, let's read the part about Lot getting drunk get, getting drunk twice and getting his daughters pregnant. Yeah, there's a little bit more in the Bible than that, but, you know, that that's kind of what he was doing. So, uh, I don't know. I'm not a fan of sex scenes. So much of it just reads like, and then he inserted tab A into slot B. I know how the mechanics work. It's so rare that I've read anything new in that. And, you know, this guy was, oh, well, not only did he insert tab A into slot B, tab A was strapped on, you know. Okay, dude, whatever. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't get too worked up. And... My trouble with those public readings is it's pretty much ambushing. You know, anybody who's listening to C-SPAN is going to hear this, with whether they want to or not. You know, when, when it's in a book, that's a little different. You're reading the book by choice. And yeah, you should have the choice to read it. Um, you know, if you're 8, probably not appropriate. If you're 13 or 14, a little different. So, anyway, I just, uh, I, I'm thinking about doing another book. Oops. I just turned on my air conditioner. Okay, we'll turn it off again. Because you can probably tell I'm a little sweaty because I'm cooling the house off with open windows. But uh, um, it, it's too cool to, to run the air conditioner. So, anyway, um, where was it? Anyway, that's one of the driving videos I'm looking at. It's, it's late at night. I'm tired. Uh, the other driving video I'm looking at is, uh, I don't know, let's just say a little bit more in-depth. I have a good outline for it. I need to write a script. I might have the chance to record at least the audio, and then I can slap some driving footage to it later. Uh, I wrote down an article about high school gun programs being threatened. Uh, but basically, it turns out that it's all a lot of fear-mongering. You know, why would people fact check when you can just scare them and get political points? Because you know they're not going to check up on what you're saying. And you can read the link. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. And then the uh, last two I put in there. And this is another one where some good links are missing. Um, I read an article, or there was another article I read about... Some billionaire CEO from an Australian billionaire CEO who wants to see employment go back up, or sorry, unemployment go up by quite a lot. 
And the reason he wants unemployment to go up quite a lot is because workers don't know their place. See, he doesn't like workers having any power. And if you go back to labor history, where did unions come from? Because workers didn't have the power. And unions gave them that power. And you look at, and I'm mostly familiar with U.S. history, but you look at U.S. history, government and big business worked hard together to fight workers, to fight them trying to have better working conditions. Uh, it's nasty. And that might be a good driving video, but in the meantime, that's a good bit of history to learn. Why do we have unions? You know, it's been easy last few decades because the unions did win significant victories. But we have been going backwards as union membership has declined and as states like mine have made it hard to join it. You know, have done everything they can to kill at unions using right to work, which is a definite misnomer. So uh, that was interesting. And then the last one, I did a video, and again, my links are, and notes and everything are missing here. Let's just see if there's an extra copy of this, because sometimes when I work on things with multiple pens, nope. No such luck. Ooh, never mind. Just got lucky. You, uh, Evernote just refreshed as I'm sitting here. Okay, as I make a complete ass of myself. <laughs> so, I, uh, Dallas Cowboy, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones has just recently had a lawsuit filed against him accusing him of racism. And again, I'm tired. You can read the link if you really care. But I just, that caught my eye because some time ago I did a driving video entitled, When Do We Forgive? And one of my examples was Dallas Cowboys owner and billionaire, Mr. Jerry Jones, who appeared in a photograph as one of several white students preventing black students from entering their white high school. Now, was he in the forefront doing the shoving? No, he was a freshman at the time of the picture, but there he was. And uh, kind of on the wrong side of history there. And, you know, he's said he's not racist. He's been accused of racism over the years. Um... And now it's happening again. And you just have to wonder. So I just thought that was interesting. A topic I talked about a long time ago bubbles to the surface again. So anyway, I am sorry that's not the most quality video I've ever done for pens and use, but I have to get to bed. It's past nine o'clock and I'm going to turn into a pumpkin here. So a very tired good night. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.